What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the seven biggest reseller myths. If you guys have never been to my channel before, my name is Chris, I run a seven figure annual reselling business and I'm gonna go over in this video, seven reseller myths that really get in the way of people really succeeding and building their online store. So I appreciate you guys. Please smash the like button, consider subscribing. We'll see you inside. The number one biggest reselling myth is that you don't have enough time to resell. Plenty of successful resellers operate a 10 to 15 listing per day habit in under one hour per day. So in today's show, I'm also gonna present the solution to every single one of these myths. So people don't have enough time, and that really boils down to not knowing exactly what you're gonna sell, how to photograph it, how to list it, how to store it, how to ship it. So all the pieces of the pie, you're not totally clear on the whole procedure. And secondly, you don't have a schedule so that you can fit that into your day. So reselling the actual mechanical part is under one hour per day for most people plus the sourcing time so I want you guys to not underestimate how long it takes to find similar items when you are sourcing so sourcing and just finding profitable items is relatively easy but finding items that are all similar to trim down the mechanical part of listing shipping uh, storing that part is a little bit more challenging so it's really important to think I want to do this exact thing in this amount of time and it'll really help you get rid of the issue of not having enough time to list. The second myth of reselling is that you don't have enough money to get started or you don't have enough money to build a big business. But that's actually not true because when you start reselling, you can start around the house and sell things that you already own. So there's no upfront cost for that. And in the resale business, the margins are quite high. You can easily double or triple your money when you're starting. So the main issue with people's stores is actually that their items aren't selling fast enough. It's not that they don't have enough money because if you start with $1, double it into $2, double it into $4 and continue on that path, after two or three months of following that course of action, you actually have more money than time at that point. The problem is most people don't spend the time getting really good at reselling to make those items turn over quickly. So there's never an issue of having enough money. And if you find the right items, there'll be people waiting to give you the money to buy those items as long as those items are in demand and have a fast turnover. So it's really important to focus on items that sell quickly in the beginning. You always have enough money, but you will not have enough money in the world to buy items that sell too slowly. So again, focus on items that sell quickly and you will never have a cash flow problem. Okay, so number three is you have to focus on high profit or high dollar items in order to succeed in reselling. And that's just not true. I think that the big difference between hobby resellers, people who do this for fun and professional resellers, people who do it for a living is to focus on profit per hour instead of profit per item. So I'm not looking to make a killing on any individual item. I'm just looking to make a living by finding similar common items. And in fact, if you can make a living, you can make a profit on common items, you're much better off because common items are much easier to find. So as an example, there are people who are looking for $500 profit items, and sometimes they only sell one per week, and that's $500 per week. That's only $20,000 a year. That normally does not pay somebody's bills. But somebody can easily find $110 profit per item per week, and that's $1,000 per week. And those items are really easy to find. So here we have two different models. One person is making $500 per item, and they're making less money than the person that's doing 10 items, or, I'm sorry, uh, $10 profit per item and 100 items per week. So it really is about how much you can make per hour and how many hours you can work versus just each individual item. So remember, focus on profit per hour versus profit per item. And then one more level higher than that is once you've figured out a system for how you can become part-time or full-time and list your 50 to 100 items per week, you can now systematize that train other people to help you. And you can get to the point where you're selling thousands of items per week. For me, I'm selling thousands of items per week, but not by myself. I have a team, but that requires thinking about profit per hour, 24 hours a day. So first you think about how much I can make on one item. That's when you're just starting. Then you figure out how many times can I do that per week? And then you figure out how many times can other people do that for me during that exact same week. And that's how you scale a resale business, but you don't have to make a lot of money per item. In fact, most of the biggest resellers in the world, their average sale price is under $12, including shipping. Number four is that you have to be a niche seller. You can actually be an everything seller. You guys know on my channel, I call people who sell everything a garage sale store. 
It's perfectly fine to do that, especially up to a certain level. I think over 30 items a day, it's very difficult to sell all random knickknacks over and over and over again. But under 30 items a day, you can do that. And I actually think when you're first starting, niching down is a mistake. And this is why. Um, in the beginning, you don't know what's common in your area, number one. So things that are common in your area, you should focus on because you have an, what I call an unfair advantage. The second part, and this is the biggest advantage, is being an expert in your field. And you need sort of a way to acquire that unusual amount of knowledge. So it might be in your area, those things are common, so you have an unfair advantage. Maybe your previous job or your previous hobbies taught you a lot about that specific industry. So in the beginning, you're still exploring, you're still experimenting. You wanna figure out what you have an unusual amount of experience in and what you have an unusual amount of access in. So if you have a really high experience level with a really high access level, that is the formula for success, but that is what a niche seller is. You know a lot about one thing, you can get a lot of one thing. In the beginning, though, since you don't know what those are, being an everything seller is perfectly fine. You can be successful as an everything seller. When I did my experiment of zero to $1,000 per week, in the beginning, I was selling everything I could put my hands on, a baby book, a blender, a microphone, Every single thing was random and it still took under five minutes per listing because I know how to look for those terms on eBay, what to look for, how to price those items. So the mechanics of selling everything are actually the same. It's just that you start to streamline when you become a niche seller. So again, you can be an everything seller. It's just easier to be niche. Number five is that eBay is passive income. eBay is not actually passive income. It's actually more like a job because you get what you put into it. So for example, if you spend one hour listing, photographing, putting stuff in and shipping, and then you spend one hour sourcing, that's like two hours of work. You can kind of expect how much money you're gonna make from those items selling to create an hourly wage. That's more like a job. So a lot of people think reselling is just something you can do here or there, but then you have here or there income. If you treat it like a job and you work a true 20 to 40 hours a week, either part-time or full-time, it will produce part-time or full-time income. I have actually never seen a reselling model that's less than 20 hours a week that produces 100 hour a week profit. It doesn't really work that way. It's sort of like a give and take. So reselling is not passive income, but it's one of the best versions of multiplying money as my partner in the Facebook group, Tekken Sports would say, eBay is the most effective way to multiply money. And I 100% agree with that. You can turn $1 in the four, $4 in the 10, $10 in the 20. In a stock market or a normal index fund or in the housing market, if you're making 1% a month, you are killing it. But imagine you spending $10 on the item to resell and only making 10 cents over the course of a year. That's the kind of return that a normal investment would produce. So we talk about this kind of strategy in our reseller group at patreon.com slash the resellers podcast. At this point, we've been doing it for about two years and people are starting to move the money from eBay, which I consider active income. You're in there hustling, grinding, turning that money into more money by flipping it. And they're using that money to buy stuff that's a little bit more passive, like the stock market, like real estate, like maybe buying a franchise. But again, those types of investments are different and the return level is much lower than eBay. The better you can multiply your money within the eBay system and reselling, the faster your money will double up. So if you want stuff that's more passive, most of the people with a lot of passive income had a very high active income. That's sort of a secret that a lot of early retirement people don't talk about. If you wanna retire early, really that comes from a high savings rate and a really high income. Okay, another myth with reselling is that you have to have a high average sale price. That's just definitely not true. So the largest reseller on eBay actually has an average sale price of just $7, including shipping. So that store does like 40 to $65 million per year, depending on uh, the cycle of the economy, and they make about one or $2 per item, and their cost of goods is really like 25 cents. So they turn 25 cents into one or $2 over and over and over again. They have a low average sale price. And I'll tell you from my personal experience. Um, over the last year, I've done roughly $3 million in sales reselling. I would say that on the $700,000 that I sold of that $3 million in the used category, I made more than 50% profit. So half of that or more was actually profit. And that's buying stuff with an average sale price of $24. That's me spending $1 to $5 on the item and selling it for an average of $24. Now, the other 2.3 million of that was high-end stuff with an average selling price of about $100. And on that, my average profit margin was about 10 to 20%. So 
significantly less profit per item and those items dried up. It was very, very difficult to sustain that. That's just me buying out large personal collections of items, which is fun and I call it cute, but it's not really sustainable because you have to continuously find those large lots, which is very difficult. It's much easier to make a living selling common items and common items by definition have a common price. So I do a lot of work with drop shippers 50% of eBay is actually $12, including shipping or under. 90% of eBay is $30, including shipping or under. So if you only sell items over $30, you are eliminating 90% of the eBay customers. So don't be afraid to sell cheap items at a profit quickly, because that's the model for 99% of people who make millions. So one more caveat for people is that you can do whatever model you want if you just want to make a couple bucks. But if you're trying to make a lot of money, there are some principles that do are that are always the same. People who are successful generally have a schedule. They generally sell the same types of items over and over again, and they generally have help. It's help when they go, they're going on the same route and talking to the same people. They're going to the same places to source. They're listing things the same way. They have the same inventory system. So you want to sell similar on everything in your life that produces positive results. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just keep doing those things that are successful over and over again. And that's much easier to do when the items are common and easy to find. Number seven and my favorite myth is that you don't have to list every day. So please comment below which myth is your favorite. And you can reach out to me at chrisadailyrefinement.com if you have any questions, but you don't have to list every day means you can actually schedule your listings for the future. eBay works best when you list the same number of items every single day because the traffic remains the same every single day. So let's look at it this way. eBay will give you X number of people for every listing you put up. If you put up a similar number of listings every single day, you have a traffic line that remains the same. So you'll have similar sales every single day. If you list a different amount of sale, uh, items every single day, you're going to have random sales and nobody likes that. So the fact that you don't have to list every day and you can take advantage of eBay scheduled listings is really important because in our mentorship group, plenty of people do 70 listings on just Saturday and schedule out 10 listings to go live every single day and they take six days off. Me personally, I always run a six day reselling schedule and take Saturday off. People love reselling because they can be flexible with their schedule, but you don't want to be flexible with your income. You want to have a stable income with a flexible schedule. Those are the two things that you want to combine. And that's what reselling can do for you. So remember, you don't have to list every single day, but you should have a consistent inflow of products into your store. Every store that has slow sales, the solution to this, and the most important thing to remember is that eBay will turn your store back on if you put a fresh number of listings into your store every single day for a week. I have never seen an example where somebody lists five quality new items a day for seven straight days and their store didn't turn back on. Whether you went on vacation, whether you've been inconsistent the last four months, whatever your situation is, one week of consistently adding brand new items to your store, 100% works. Now, one final thought before we leave, so please smash the like button and consider subscribing. People are always gonna ask, what about delist, relist? What about ending an item and adding an item? So let's say you had 100 items in your store and you delist 10 and relist 10. You still only have 100 items in your store. You just remove them and put them back in. If you decide this, instead of doing that, you add in 10 fresh items, now you have 110 items in your store. And if you go back and correct some of the 100 items, that aren't selling as well and you improve those, now you have a double whammy and your sales are for sure gonna go up because you're adding fresh blood into your store. You're feeding the beast. eBay's happy that you've got fresh stuff in the store. And they're also happy that you're going in and improving your old listings by fixing the title, adding new item specifics, making a more aggressive price. So it's really important to understand you don't have to list every day, but you can have income that's really, really stable. It's one of the only side hustles I've ever done where you can make your income almost the same every single day. So I appreciate you guys. Until next time, join our Patreon group at patreon.com slash the resource podcast and make progress daily.